Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm glad and surprised to see so many of you here today. Hope you are all comfy with um, cookies and some tea and ready to learn something new. Yeah, so uh, it's great that you decided to spend um, your free time on this webinar today. And I really hope that there will be uh, something useful for each of you. So my name is Fabien Timoshenko, and I am a teacher of Moscow State Pedagogical University uh, Faculty for International Education. And also you can see uh, the emblem of the University of London in this slide, because you know these two are closely connected. La University of London is an integral part of um, faculty for international education as each of our students has the opportunity uh, to study there, which is really great, I think. I don't like speaking about myself too much, but in, uh, the, at the end of my presentation, each of you will have the opportunity to ask me some questions, okay? So, um, today's topic is how to write a successful essay at the Russian state exam. I will tell you how to get the highest points for it and what you need to be especially careful with, what ready structures and phrases you can use within any topic in order not to worry about the time limit as well. Okay, so let's get it started. So what is uh, the most important thing would we always need to begin with before writing the essay? Of course, it's understanding the key, uh, the topic and defining. Let's look at some examples that we have here. Reading classical literature is becoming less and less important for young people. You need to understand the topic literally and uh, don't even try to look for some hidden meaning here because there isn't any. So what are we asked to write about in this topic? About classical literature, right? Um, about that it is becoming less important. You don't have to write about whether people like reading or not, uh, about your personal attitude to reading because you aren't asked to do it here. And then also about young people. Um, not, don't write about people in general because you are asked to write about young people in particular. Okay, so this is uh, what our keywords are here. I'm just trying to make my presentation work. Yes, so here now you can see the keywords. I've colored them red. I can see that you are able to use the chat. Yeah, that's why let's try to define the keywords together with the, the next topic. It's just a bit slow here, so. Okay, doing sports is essential for young people. If you can use the chat, then please write down what keywords we have here. Yes, sport is correct, but doing is important because we can't write about watching sports here if we aren't asked to, especially only about doing sports. Mm -hmm. Then that is, is essential, yes. So again, not about your attitude, but uh, about uh, sports being essential or not. And then of course, again, young people, yeah? Not um, people in general. Okay, what about this one? Let's try this. Self-education is impossible without computer skills. So what's important here? Impossible, yes, great. What else? Self-education, mm -hmm. and then computer skills. Yes, here it is crucial to understand the word skills. If you don't understand it, then it's better to take another topic because you can choose from two, yeah? So what is skills? You are not asked um, to write about having a computer or not having one, but skills is about the ability, about your ability to use the computer. Okay, 
And then self-education. Again, what is self-education? It's education without guidance of teachers or institutions. That's why don't write about school classes or language courses here. You aren't asked to do this. It's self-education. And then yes, and then every single word. No, not every single word. It's just these three words basically being the most important ones. So being impossible, understand that literally you need to write about it being impossible, not even important or not important. Okay, so here, self, impossible, and computer skills was the right answer. Um, as you can choose from two topics, I would advise quickly going through the keywords of each of them. And here, for instance, what topic would you not choose from these three? You either do, yeah, you're writing that you can't hear me? Yeah, the third one, the third one, because it is uh, difficult to write about something being impossible and to find arguments for this, because everything is kind of possible. So this uh, third one is really a uh, tricky, yeah, about self-education is a really tricky one. Okay, so what comes next? Brainstorming ideas. This is our next step after defining the keywords. What is brainstorming? Are you familiar with this process? Have you ever uh, kind of caused a storm in your brain? What is it about? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have lots of thinking. Yes, yes, it's basically um, collecting all your ideas and writing it down on a sheet of paper. So everything you can think of uh, connected with uh, a particular topic. Yes, so here finally we have the picture, just uh, writing everything down. Here, let's take the topic with classical literature. Here you need to find some arguments and to brainstorm your ideas in terms of classical literature becoming less important or not becoming less important. So what arguments could you find that classical literature is becoming less, less important? So please, your guesses. Mm-hmm, no way to use it in modern life. Mm-hmm. Better modern writers, okay, yeah, this is also a nice one. They prefer to use e-devices, yes. We have a lot different ways to know something. Yes, not only through classical literature, of course. Mm -hmm. So I can see many, many nice answers. Okay, great. So what I have here, as you can see, young people prefer to watch videos rather than to read in general and read classical literature. And as you said, they like reading modern books more than reading classical literature. Literature. Okay, then the second one. They don't find answers to their problems in classical literature anymore. Yes, because classical literature isn't really relevant for them. Mm -hmm. Classical literature will become never will never become um, unimportant. Okay, so this is the opposing point of view where we also need to find an argument. So look what I have here. Classical literature is a great means of expanding your vocabulary. That's why it is not becoming less important. Okay, so what is our first step when writing the essay? We uh, begin any essay with the introduction, of course. What do we need to do in uh, the introduction in the essay for the Russian state exam? So we need to state the problem, paraphrasing the given statement. What does paraphrasing even mean? We need to understand this here. Changing at least two words using synonyms. It's, um, I think, the best way to do this. And then uh, changing a grammatical structure. So you can either change two words or change the grammatical structure. Here's an example. You can just turn active into passive and then um, you paraphrase the whole topic and that's it. So let's write two sentences in our introduction. Um, as we took the topic connected with classical literature, so the first thing uh, can be a sentence about the topic in general. Here you can see, here you can see that I have colored some words red. 
Uh, so you can see what phrases you can use in any essay, no matter with what topic you have. Yeah. So this is uh, the phrases I was talking about. If you learn them, then everything will be just easy at the exam. Uh, don't worry if you don't have time to write them all down now, because you will be able to watch this video afterwards on our YouTube channel. Okay. And then one sentence about the two points of view. For example, some people claim that reading classical literature is losing its importance among the modern youth, while the others hold an opposite view. So here you can see how we paraphrase the topic. What did we do? We wrote, it's losing its importance. Yeah, instead of uh, is becoming less and less important. We shortened it kind of a little bit and changed the grammatical structure here. And then uh, we wrote among the modern youth, as you can see, instead of uh, for young people. So this is how um, paraphrasing um, has to look like here. One of the ways, of course. Okay, so um, during my presentation, you will see some more phrases that you could use, but we won't focus on them now. You uh, will be able to put this video on a pause afterwards, and if you want, just take something from uh, my suggested phrases here. Okay, so let's start with the main part, which will consist of three paragraphs, the first of which is writing your own opinion. So two or three arguments. Here you uh, will be able to see the arguments we chose on our, from our brainstorming list. Okay, so in my opinion, classical literature is becoming less and less important for the use uh, these days. This is what our opinion is. And now the two arguments. Firstly, modern adolescents prefer to seek answers to their questions in YouTube videos and online blogs rather than in classical books. So please pay attention to um, the synonym that we used for young people. First of all, we used youth and here we used adolescents. So use as many synonyms in your essays as you can. Try not to repeat yourself, yeah? So um, if you have uh, some other synonyms in your mind, then of course you can use it in the next sentences. Secondly, our second argument. We live in such a fast changing world that problems and experiences people had centuries ago are not longer relevant to the use of the 21st century. Okay, so this is basically how expressing our own opinion with arguments may look like. Now let's move on with the opposing opinion where we can write one or two arguments, but I always suggest writing only one because in this way it will be easier to complete the next step where you need to explain why you don't agree with the opposing opinion. So how do we do this here? However, some people believe that classical literature is not losing its importance for young people nowadays. And then the argument. In their view, reading classical books is still the best way for the modern youth to expand their vocabulary and improve their grammar. So one argument is enough here. Then the last paragraph from the main part explain why you don't agree with the opposing opinion. A sentence what, that you can use um, with any topic. Personally, I don't agree with the opinion mentioned above. And now we explain it. Why? I am convinced that since the language of classical books is often old-fashioned and outdated, today's young people can work on their language skills much more effectively by using numerous tutorials, lectures, and other resources widely available on the internet. So this is kind of an explanation of why we don't agree with the opposing opinion. So again, some more phrases that you can use, just put it on a pause um, when you see this video on YouTube. Okay, the last part of the essay basically is the conclusion where your task is to restate your position. In conclusion, although there are different opinions on this problem, I still believe that classical literature is losing its importance among young people in the modern society. 
So here you could finish your essay, but in case you don't have enough words, the minimum amount of words that you need to write is 180. So it's basically from 200 to 250, but you are allowed to um, write kind of minus 10% and this uh, makes 180. Um, you can sum up the arguments that you mentioned in the main body. So this is uh, in case you can't um, think of anything else you can write here. So this is a possible way of how to do it. And that is happening mainly because today's viewers prefers to search for answers to their questions and improve their language skills with the help of more relevant resources such as postcards, blogs, and YouTube videos. So we kind of um, repeat ourselves here, but this is uh, what a conclusion is meant to do. That's why, uh, don't be scared, it's completely appropriate to repeat yourself in the conclusion. Just again, paraphrasing it. Don't use the same words, of course, that you used in the main body. Okay, so let's talk about some common lexical and grammatical mistakes and how to prevent them in order to um, build up a perfect essay. The first common mistake students make is using a wrong word within the context. Always think about the context you use the word in. Let's look at the example. Um, possible way of speaking about people basically here. We have persons, humans, people, humanity, mankind, and folks. Do you know what the differences are between them? So persons is uh, the official way of speaking about people, yeah? For example, persons with disabilities. In Russian, we also use a different word. It isn't uh, people, we use person, which means litsa, yes? Translated into Russian. And then we have humans. It's also a bit different from people. They are kind of synonyms, but they um, have uh, a different meaning if you use it within a context, yeah? So humans are people from the perspective of biology. And then humanity, mankind, and folks. Um, I want to drive your attention to the word folks because this uh, is completely inappropriate to use in this essay. This uh, word is colloquial. This is how we speak orally, but we can't use words like this in our essay. Okay, so be careful with this. Try to use um, formal language and make your language as academic as possible. So don't write, uh, write as we would say it, you know, think about the written language more. Okay, the second one is don't translate from Russian into English and try to think in English. For example, here we have go to your go. This is how we would say it in Russian if translated literally into English. But the English people say pursue your goal. That's why go to your goal isn't really appropriate as well. So it would be even be a mistake. Then to visit a lecture. We can visit our relatives or we can visit a different country, a different city, but we can't visit a lecture. This is impossible for the Englishman to say. Of course, they will understand you, but we have different words for um, describing it. Go to a lecture or attend a lecture. This is um, how it would sound correctly. So how um, you can do this? I mean, of course, it's difficult. My um, advice to try to think in English, you may ask, oh man, how can I do it? But if you read more, in general, books or articles or anything else, then your brain will automatically remember all the collocations in English. And um, yes, you, you will start thinking in English, okay? Of course, it uh, will take you some while, but still... Yes, but still... Um, here you also here you also have uh, a website freecollocation.com uh, where you can always check whether two words fit together. 
Okay, so if you are not sure whether you can say go to your goal or you need to say it in another way, then um, just go to the website and there you will find all your answers. Okay, then we have word building, which is also important. I know that you have a task in your uh, Russian state exam, which is connected with word building. So you um, need to be quite familiar with it, that you can't, for example, use prefix an when building any negative adjectives. Of course, there are some more of them. So this is something that you also need to revise. And then phrasal verbs. Yeah, also you can't write to find up, you need to write to find out. Spelling mistakes that change the meaning. Also be careful with this C instead of C. Of course, it's it, uh, a silly mistake, but if you are too worried at the very exam, then you may make such mistakes. So anyways, be careful with everything. And then grammatical mistakes and how to prevent them. Tenses. If you start a sentence in past simple, it's uh, impossible to end the sentence with present simple, yeah? So always uh, look at how the different parts of the sentences fit together. Uh, just an example connected with re reported speech where most pupils make mistakes. She said that she is happy. So this would be, of course, incorrect. You need to write, she said that she was happy, yeah, to make these part of the sentences uh, fit together. Okay, then we have modal verbs. Again, just um, revise uh, what different content, contents, uh, contexts we can use them in. Then we have plural forms and apostrophizing. Yeah, so this is a, a tricky thing because many people make mistakes in these sentences, even English native speakers. This is what I can tell you. So the, uh, for the second form is the correct one and the first one is of course incorrect here. Comparative and superlative forms of adjectives. Yeah, again, a thing to revise where you may make mistakes, adjectives and adverbs. Always remember that if uh, a word goes with the verb, you need to put li at the end. Yes, and if it uh, goes with the noun, you don't have to do this. Articles, um, a thing that I would say is the trickiest one of all the grammar stuff for Russian people and for all people who don't have articles in their language. That's why, um, yes, you need to study it really attentively and um, learn to use them in different contexts as well and learn all the rules here basically because there are some rules. Uh, prepositions, pronouns, a common mistake, yeah, how to write themselves, and uh, the word order, we need to find out why is it happening is of course incorrect. You need to write why it is happening. Again, maybe uh, this mistake is again about uh, translating from Russian into English literally. And then word building, if the part of speech was changed, then this is uh, a grammar mistake. Okay, so if you don't change the part of speech, it's a lexical mistake, and then here's uh, grammar mistakes. For example, impression instead of impressive. Okay, now common stylistic mistakes. Rhetorical questions. This is a thing that you can't use in uh, the uh, essay for the Russian state exam. So just avoid them, nothing difficult here. Colloquial speech, it's um, what I have already told you with folks instead of people. So yes, you can't write this in this essay or um, some, I saw an example of this stuff or it sucks or something. So no, this is uh, completely inappropriate here. Only formal language, only academic language. And then short forms are also inappropriate. I'm, he's, who's, what's, yes, so I am, he is. And uh, here the good thing is that if you write them separately, you even have more words and sometimes you do need more words. So you have two instead of one here. Modal verbs, can't, mustn't, yeah, an exception, please pay attention to this exception. It's needed because uh, this is how you can and must leave this verb, um, leave this verb, needn't. Okay, now let's speak a little bit about um, the criteria of assessment. 
because if you understand them, uh, if you understand what you get your points for, then it's of course easy, easier to get prepared for everything, yeah? And to evaluate your own work. Lexical mistakes. So let's um, just have a look, yeah? How many mistakes you can make in order to get the highest amount of points here. So here it's just only, only one mistake. Um, you can make two grammar mistakes. And here about spelling and punctuation. Yeah, um, don't worry too much about punctuation actually, uh, because the only thing you need to remember is to put a full stop at the end of the sentence and um, to put commas after uh, parenthetical words such as however, firstly, secondly. So this is again an easy thing to do, but sometimes if you are too worried again at the very exam, then um, it may be difficult uh, for you, you know, to put all your thoughts together and you may forget about such stuff. But yes, be careful with pronunciation. Uh, and then spelling, of course, is clear if you forget a letter or if you put a wrong letter. So um, anything connected with the spelling of a word. And then also you can get six points for a well-structured text which content corresponds with the title. Um, so basically, if you define the keywords correctly and if you use the phrases that I even gave you here today, then you just get the six points but we will speak about it a little bit later and I will explain um, um, on an example, you know, how to uh, get these points. So what else you can do to be better prepared? Be ready to write an uh, essay on any topic. I would suggest focusing on the most difficult ones because usually you, not you, but all of us, uh, we leave the trickiest topics out because we think, oh man, no, it's too difficult. I will take an easier one. But this is what you not have to do when preparing for the exam. You need to take the trickiest topics, the most difficult topics, and search for information on the internet or in books about the topic. And it's also a great way to expand your vocabulary. Yeah, if you know vocabulary on different topics and then you are just prepared for everything because it may happen that you get two topics um, that are not really uh, these what you prepared to and what you uh, wanted to see there. Okay, and then also checking your grammar and vocabulary here, the website grammarly.com may help you. Um, just quickly explaining how it works. You just write down the text of your essay or you may write it in Word and then copy it there. And the app, this website, automatically assesses your work in terms of uh, grammar and vocabulary and also punctuation mistakes, by the way. So yeah, this is a very nice thing and um, this app can just uh, uh, just uh, evaluate your work, you know, instead of a teacher or someone else. Then also ask a teacher or friends uh, to check your essay. Um, of course, your friend may not check your essay um, in terms of grammar and vocabulary mistake, but uh, they can help you to say whether the essay is logically structured because it's sometimes difficult to evaluate your own essay. So you may just not mention it that you are writing on kind of not really the topic you are meant to write. Yeah, if you um, didn't really define the keywords correctly. Okay, and then one more thing is learn to fill the time because I often hear that people just run out of time at the exam and this is the most tiresome and annoying thing that can happen. Um, in order to prevent this, just take a stopwatch when writing your essays at home and find the part where you spend most time on and that is um, the most difficult yeah, for you if you spend too much time on it. And focus on this very topic and try to be faster every time. You can even write down the time you, um, it took you to write um, an essay on a particular topic. 
Okay, so try to get faster every time. So, and then of course, read more. This is a thing that is really important. I've all, already mentioned it. And um, yes, so here, this is um, what you need to do in order to um, be really well prepared for your essay. Okay. So here are some books that you can um, also use to get prepared for your essay. Uh, especially pay attention to the book in the middle. The author is Yunova. Um, you may not see it here, but um, just mention the name Yunova yeah, in order to find this book. Uh, you can find sample essays, so examples of essays uh, on any topic actually. But I um, would advise you not to pay attention to the structure in these books because it's uh, a little bit old fashioned, but pay attention to the content. Just read all the essays and then you will have ideas in your head that you could use in any topic to um, develop your essay and to find right arguments for and against. Okay, um, here I quickly want to discuss all the criteria again. You can see a real essay of a real person from a real state exam. Um, this essay is not that good. I especially took one uh, to explain all the mistakes to you, of course. So let's look at the title first. It's reported that billions of dollars are spent on space exploration projects every year. Some people believe that this money should be used to solve problems on Earth. So a quite tricky question, isn't it? I think the person may have never um, come across such a topic and that's why maybe the essay isn't that good, but let's still look at all the criteria and um, at all, um, at how a person assessed this exam. It wasn't me, it was a real person from the real estate exam. So it's quite interesting. So the first criteria is connected with the content. There you can get three points for it. Um, the question that I will ask now, I will ask you to notice them because this is what you can ask yourself when assessing and evaluating your own essay. So the first question in terms uh, of the content is, is there an introduction and the paraphrasing of the main problem? So quickly, let's have a look at, at it, yeah? I think we can see it here. The author paraphrased the problem, trying to slightly modify what was uh, proposed in the instructions for the assignment, and she also uh, stated the relevance of the problem, so everything is quite nice, quite nice with uh, the first question. The second one. Did the author manage to express his or her own opinion with the help of two or three arguments? So where is the opinion of the author here? I think that people should read books and only after that watch an adaptation. But the argument is quite unconvincing. So there's not, no clear structure and some arguments can't even be called arguments at all. For example, here we can see, for me, this is the right way. Why is it the right way? So yeah, no justification. You can't write like this. We understand what the author means, but um, there are no arguments. That's why we can't give the points here. You need to write rational arguments so that the um, examiner will understand everything at once. Okay, then one more question here. Is there an opposing opinion presented in the essay followed by one or two arguments? So basically just going through all the paragraphs that have to be there in your essay. The author does not offer an opposing point of view at all. And accordingly, there are no arguments that could support the alternative version here. So unfortunately, we can't give a point for this. Next one, does the author share his own thoughts regarding his disagreement with the opposing opinion. So it's basically what we did in the third paragraph of the um, main body. But no, of course, if there are no arguments for the opposing opinion, 
then there are no contra arguments as well. So the author loses quite a lot of points here. And then the conclusion, is there a conclusion? Look at the final part of the essay. In conclusion, I want to say that people should read books. And after that, if they want, they should watch this film. But reading books, it is necessary for my mind. So we can see a couple of mistakes, like not for my mind, we need to say to my mind. Um, but the first criteria isn't about mistakes. So let's just look at the conclusion itself. So the formulation of the thought is really vague. So again, we can't really understand what the author means here. He or she wrote, you need to read books and then if you want, watch a movie. So there's no justification again. Yeah, so we can say that the author repeats the same thesis, but doesn't support it with any explanation. That's why uh, the um, examiner gave one point out of three for the first criteria. The second one is about the organization of your essay. The first question here is, is the text divided into paragraph and does the text division follow the rules? So here we can of course see that not because uh, she left quite many um, paragraphs out and didn't uh, consider them at all here. So of course um, this was really bad. Then the second question is, did she use any cohesive devices or he? Uh, which means how well structured is the text? So again, we can see that it isn't uh, really well structured. Yeah, even um, instead of in conclusion, we can see in concession or something. So this person must have been really, really worried if he or she made um, such kind of spelling mistakes. Yeah. So here you should add as many however and moreover as you can because the um, examiner expects this from you. So please add words like this, at least two, yeah? However and moreover. And that's it. Okay, so again, one point of three here for this task. The next one is vocabulary. How correctly is the vocabulary sele selected and does it correlate with the main task? Everything is fine with this in this uh, essay. Did he use a wide range of vocabulary, which means synonyms? So judging by the lexical content of the essay, no, not really. We can't really see um, any um, synonymizing here in this essay. And then the last, the last point connected uh, with vocabulary is does he or she choose the right words? Are they suitable within the, content, within the context? And do they prevent understanding of the text? Yeah, so this is important. Whether the words prevent the understanding of the text or not. So they also made some mistakes or rather um, inaccuracies as we can call them. Um, for example, the word actuality here, but um, we again, doesn't prevent the understanding of the whole text. So um, two points out of three for the lexic or the vocabulary here. So next is, is grammar. How correct are the grammatical structures? Do they correspond to the general content of the work? In general, we can say yes. What can be said about the diversity of the grammatical structures used here? So this is what uh, tells us about the general level of English of this person, which is also important for us. The composition we can see uses uh, quite simple structures that uh, means the person doesn't really have a high level of uh, you know, knowing English. And there are also mistakes like this book, books instead of these books, and then more wiser. Mm -hmm. I hope now you can hear and see me again. Okay, so we are um, already finishing with um, discussing the grammatical structure of this work. 
So uh, we said, we just said that this person doesn't really have a high level of English because he uses quite simple grammatical structures. Okay, and the last thing is spelling and punctuation. There were also made some errors. That's why we give one point out of two for this. And for the grammar, the person uh, got only one point out of three. So which makes six points out of 14. But um, I didn't want to scare you with showing you this work and um, to telling you the point the person got for this. But I think you can yourself see the mistakes here. And if you can, then you don't have to worry about your essay at all. Then everything is just fine, okay? So this is how the criteria works. And I hope you now have an understanding of what the people want from you when writing this essay. Okay, so one last thing is your homework before um, we move on to our questions that I will be happy and excited to answer. So the homework, here I have prepared two um, topics that you basically already know because it was one of our first slides here where we discussed the keywords. But I will ask you, if you are an 11 year student, take the second one. Um, because I told you, you need to focus on the trickiest things. And if you are an eight year or nine, um, eight, nine or 10 year student, then you can take the first one because it just would be easier for you to start with. Okay, so um, you will receive an email and will um, have the opportunity to send your essays and then receive some feedback. Okay, so now I will be happy to answer your questions. Yes, here you have the homework link in the chat and we will be happy to receive any of your essays and then provide you with some feedback. Okay, so now your questions. Where we can find synonyms? Um, there are also um, um, dictionaries of synonyms. You can search them in the internet. I think Oxford had one and Cambridge must have one as well. So there are dictionaries in the internet, just Google it. Till when can we send, yeah? Can we send the homework? Um, I think uh, it's better to do this today if you have time or tomorrow, yeah, but not too late because we will need time to uh, check everything. Okay. There was an, a topic about space exploration. Yes, the topic is space exploration that I used to tell you about the mistakes another person made at the Russian state exam. Yeah, the deadline is um, tomorrow evening, let it be. Mm -hmm. No, there was not a wrong essay on the screen. This was uh, the next essay where I wanted to show you the mistakes of another person who wrote this. You can just... Um, watch this webinar again and then you will see everything mm -hmm. what are the common punctuational mistakes except linking words there are quite many of them i can even tell you that uh, when i studied yeah are you a native speaker no i'm not a native speaker but uh, we can say almost a native speaker because um i have cried a lot of um, connections with england and i used to study and teach there for a while so, um, yes, I'm not a native speaker, but I may sound uh, like one because I spent a lot of time there. Okay, what question was there with the common uh, punctuation mistake? Yes, this was a, a great problem when I studied in England because I used to uh, put the commas like uh, in German or in Russian, which are both my native languages. And in English, they kind of, um, avoid using uh, commas at all. So it's a completely different system. But again, there are, um, there are no strict rules for this. Okay, so um, just remember putting it after linking words. And then at the end of the sentence, this is uh, everything you need to know for the Russian state exam. The number of words. Uh, it is not necessary to write 250 words. Uh, the maximum amount is uh, 275. 
but I wouldn't get too close to this uh, amount because you may make uh, a mistake in counting your words. And if you get more than this, then it's a great problem. That's right, try to fit into 200 to 250. Mm -hmm. Did you decide to connect your life with English? It's a private message to me. Ah, why did you decide, sorry. Oh, I don't even have an explanation to this. Um, I don't know, I've just uh, known languages all my life and then uh, rather was teaching than with English, yeah? Okay, what else? Не будут ли снимать баллы за то, что опровергающий аргумент будет только один? No, because you can write either one or two. As uh, and in the arguments for you can write two or three. So it's, uh, I promise, it's uh, not a mistake if you write only one. Yeah, so because you are allowed to do this. It's even written in the task itself. Um, what else can I see here? Where should we spend our letters? What do we mean with spend our letters? But you will receive the email address, okay? Mm -hmm. What books can you recommend to read in English? Oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I would recommend if you, it depends on your level of knowing English, of course, but uh, if you are a beginner, then of course, um, I would su suggest starting with modern literature because there you have um, kind of the language, how we speak it, and it's uh, much more simple to understand. If you start with a very difficult book, then you maybe won't want to read any more books in your life. That's why don't take something like uh, Jane Austen. Uh, in the beginning, the language is quite old fashioned and you will have to translate every single word literally. So yes, but it depends on your taste. Take something that is really interesting for you. I like the Bronte sisters very much. I like Charles Dickens. There are Thomas Hardy. There are very many authors. Depends on what you like, of course. Or oh, The Lord of the Rings, if you like fantasy. Um, okay. What is the topic? The topic it was on the slide, if you mean your homework. Will constant use of Grammarly make you worse in English? It checks everything. Yes, this is an important one. Um, I can't say that it uh, mentions all your mistakes. That's why you will have to check it on uh, other websites uh, as I showed you with uh, connect with collocations, for example. So um, yes, don't use it too often, of course, only if you want to check, um, but, but try to check it yourself first. That's why I suggest writing it at first in Word, for example, checking it yourself, and then kind of rechecking it um, at Grammarly, okay? Mm -hmm. um, okay, you need to come to the faculty uh, for international education, and then um, I think we will meet there, because this is where I teach, okay? Thank you, thank you for the nice comments. Uh, how much uh, time should I write in essay? Um, you have 60 minutes for this, but it depends on how much it takes you to write the letter and to do the other exercises. So of course, uh, I would suggest um, 35 minutes is just perfect. So try to come to 35 minutes, okay? Mm-hmm. Do I have to say the opposing view in the first paragraph? No, then the first paragraph, it's in the second paragraph of the main body. Mm -hmm. Where we can find a book about example of essay. It was right in the middle, so you can uh, rewatch uh, this um, webinar after at YouTube and you will see how this book is called. The author is Yu Nova. Okay, have a good day too. Can you show essay topics for homework again? Okay, just one second, sure. But you will receive it as an email. I'm, I'm just trying to uh, move the slides on my presentations. Yeah, the topics, you will receive them per email. In 
conclusion. Yes, you can use a slinger in the conclusion. Mm -hmm. This problem is still to be discussed. And after that, underline our opinion again. Yes, yeah, this is a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. So kind of uh, provide some ideas for the reader to think about as we do it in articles. It's also possible in um, your essay here. Um, are there any templates to write a letter, like start or end? Um, the letter is a little bit different task. I think uh, that you will have, or you already had a webinar connected with uh, writing a letter. So you should go to our YouTube uh, channel and then you can watch everything connected with it uh, one more time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Henry is your favorite. Yes, our Henry is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to search for more answers. There are so many of them. Um, is it correct to use phrasal verbs in any say? As far as I know, they didn't belong to the formal cell. No, you can use phrasal, phrasal verbs in uh, such kinds of essays, but be careful with them in order not to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to uh, move here. Here you can see them. Mm -hmm. So those who are, who, who are year 11 students, please take the second topic, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use phrasal verbs. What about phrasal verbs? Why not? Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Okay, yes, I guess this is the end of all the questions. Um, what about phrasal verbs? Yeah, what about phrasal verbs? What is wrong with phrasal verbs? No, you can use them, but be careful with them. And don't you maybe don't use too much of them, yeah, to in order not to make um the essay too informal. Okay, for B2, which book you can advise for B2? Just anything in the original, because if you have B2, then you are able to read books in the original. Okay. So I guess um Yes, thank you for coming, guys. Techniques to train giving arguments. Um, there's a nice book. It's uh, on the right of um, the presentation slide where the books are. And there are some techniques of giving arguments presented. It's just very uh, difficult to answer these questions in a um, few sentences, you know. But everything you need to do is read more on the topic, and then the arguments will come to your mind itself. So you just uh, need to have uh, more information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess this is um, all the questions. Thank you for coming. And then um, maybe see you next year in September, who knows? Okay, thank you and see you.